ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂಧಸ್ಯಾನಂಜನಾಶ್ಲಾಕಾ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಳಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಂ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿ small preaching effort of this govind das who's very lowly and wretched on this appearance day of narasimha bhagavan who is a very transcendental form of the lord who lives in narasimha loka and descends to protect his loving devotees <coughs> as and when required and according to the level of their devotion their bhakti which doesn't necessarily mean devotion but is characterized by devotion narasimha means the nara means human and simha means lion so Narasimha Dev is the half man half lion form of the lord and he is very merciful the story of Prahlad Maharaj and Narasimha Dev and Hiranyakashipu is something like this that Prahlad was born in a different age an age of wonder and uh from his very birth was a great devotee of the lord and he even at school he he encouraged all of his other um pupils classmates <coughs> to chant hari krishna to chant and be happy and praise the lord and worship the lord and his father was not a devotee his father was a a demon named hiranya kashipu hiranya means gold and kashipu means soft bed so he was very uh uninterested in austerity he was very wealthy and lived in a great palace with tall pillars and gold ornaments and jeweled inlays and he discouraged prahlad from his bhakti he crushed his samskaras and he was incredibly mean and unpleasant to him and he despite being his father materially fell envious of Narasimha because he was um in so much of a loving propensity with Prahlad and Prahlad was attacked many times by <coughs> his father who uh tried to poison him tried to um kill him in so many ways <coughs> but when he was poisoned he oh, he also pushed him off the cliff when he was poisoned he vomited the poison back out due to the mercy of the lord and when he fell off the cliff garuda swooped down and and saved him or somehow he he was he was protected by krishna in his transcendental uh ways up and and until uh Prahlad and Hiranyakashipu were having a a big fight a big argument 
in the, in his palace. And Hiranyakashipu said, shouted at Prahlad and said, and said, "Your Lord is everywhere." Because Prahlad had said that this, but that God is everywhere. And he said, "Your Lord is everywhere, but He's in this pillar." And he, he, Prahlad said, "Yes, yes, yes. He's in this. He's in that pillar." And then he, he and Hiran Kashyapu said, "Then I will kill him." And he struck the pillar with his sword. And as he struck the pillar with his sword, the pillar cracked, an almighty sound, and he. And from within that pillar, Narasimha Dev manifested. And he appeared in an incredibly angry, ferocious uh, way. Narasimha has uh, hands and teeth like nails or lightning bolts. Uh, and Hiranyakashipu, having done so much austerity, he stood on the tip of his toes like a ballet dancer would uh, for over a thousand years in austerity and his body became emaciated, he, did, he took no food, his skeleton uh, started to show through his ribs, his skin became like leather and he received a boon from Brahma because of this, Brahma appeared and said, "And said, yes, let me let me uh, reward your um, efforts." And uh, Hiranyakashipu, he requested Brahma that he be given the boon to never be killed on the land or in the sky, to never be killed. At, uh, in the day or the night and to be never never be killed um, I can't remember the third boon that he was given but he had these boons from Brahma to never be um, killed in this way but this just shows the uh, wily ways of the Lord who is remarkable in his prowess and his actions because although Hiranyakashipu had this boon to not be killed in certain ways Nishinga appeared and he transcended those rules of Brahma's boon he killed him on his lap so he was neither in the sky nor in the air, on the land or in the sky. He killed him with his nails. So he he neither he didn't use a weapon. That was his that was his other request to be never killed by any weapon. But the Lord's nails are not a weapon. They're they're part of his body. That our finger we don't think of our fingernails as weapons. And uh, he disemboweled him in a very uh, vicious way and as he was being disemboweled he um, Prahlad placed a garland around his neck because even though Hiranyakashipu was his father he had so much love for the, for the Bhagavan that he he praised him and, and after Hiranyakashipu had been disposed of he seated Prahlad on his lap and proceeded to stroke his hair and they engaged with each other in a very sweet way so we shouldn't think of Narasimha as his as our um, enemy because he's so scary He's quite, a, he's quite a fearsome, awesome form of the Lord. But we should approach him as a devotee, as in humility and with love. And he, he will be merciful to us. And, and we will, if we want to, be able to go to Narasimha Loka and 
and see the forms that are there. Um, I'm sure Narsingha has a Parava, he has a, um, a family, so there will be other Nara Singha forms. Some people say that this is a Therianthropic form that is, uh, but this is incorrect. That he's not, uh, he's not a made up form of the Lord. None, nothing is is made up by uh, our brains as we think it is. Actually, we are um, within the body of the Lord and the Lord is within us and he is not discoverable through the process of logic alone. He can only be discovered by um, by bhakti which is a very lofty subject and we have to cultivate it very carefully with um, following the procedure of our uh, sampradaya, of our lineage and our guru or gurus because Shri Guru is one and many people say that following the order of your guru explicitly is the way to attain the mercy of the Lord, but we have seen that our gurus have requested us to be thoughtful men and by becoming thoughtful we um, maintain some level of independence. The more thoughtful and the more bhakti we have, the more uh, God will give us independence. Some people like having their independence taken away, some people like having lots of independence, but the Lord himself is fully independent at all times. So by contact through devotion in different ways, we can approach him. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Dasyam Satyam Atmanavedanam that these are different forms of bhakti, hearing, chanting, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam, remembering Vishnu, Padasevanam, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, Dasyam, servitude, Sakyam, friendship, Atmanivedanam, offering our whole uh, Atma to the Lord. What is Atma? Atma is uh, sometimes described as soul, but many do not ascribe to this idea of spirit soul. They think them to be <coughs> mundane words, but when one actually has self-realization of uh, God, Krishna, then we realize that self-realization means just this, Atmanivedanam, it means offering our whole soul. And soul cannot be cleaved, it's, it's uncleavable, it, it's infinite and the self is everywhere is part of um, nothing other than itself it is as it is and by being faithful by having Shraddha we trust the Lord we trust that nothing is going to hurt us and we have been hurt so how are we going to trust the Lord uh, well, it, it starts with trusting yourself. It starts with trusting that what your desires are, are healthy and want to be, and we want to um, relish association with our fellow humans, with, our, with the animal kingdom, with the environment, and by developing healthy desires, 
we can cultivate ways in which to um, perform our devotional activities without a performance type attitude. We make our uh, realizations heart deep that, that we f we actually have um, a limbic system. This is the material Western science terminology for the brain, which is three. Use the reptilian brain, the limbic system, <coughs> and the neocortex. And some people get caught up very highly in the filaments of the neocortex. <coughs> some people act in a very fight and flight kind of way with the reptilian brain and some people um, are very very emotional and they, they, they ascribe the, the supremacy of each one of these different functions of the mind but actually um, the mind is comprised of manas Ahamkara and Buddhi. And Manas is divided into Jnana, Icha, and Kriya, thinking, feeling, and willing. Then the Ahamkara, the eye maker, that gives our identity, the ego. And then the Buddhi, the intellect, the higher intellect. The function of the ahamkara, the ego. The ego is a funny word because many spiritual leaders will tell you to uh, destroy the, the ego. They'll, they'll smash, it, smash it to pieces. But this is only for the purpose of building, uh, encouraging you to build it back up yourself and find your true will, your daemon of who you uh, and what you want to be in this world. And if you are the most intelligent man then you will naturally want to be uh, a bhakta because of the supremacy of bhakti shiva he bhakti shiva he shakti so we worship and pray to lord narasimha dev that he will be merciful to us that he will give us darshan someday Maybe he'll come to us in our, in our dreams. Maybe he'll come to us in our uh, minds, med mind's eye meditation during the day. And sometimes we may actually go there physically and, and meet him and, and see him. Uh, reality is Satchit Ananda, eternity, knowledge and bliss or eternity being consciousness and bliss and it's uh, that we're in eternity that, that life goes on eternally there's no rush yet bhakti can be divided into two classes this is very simple simple and, and just off the top of my head but bhakti can be divided into two classes one of which is a very general samana kind of way and another which is a more specified focused kind of way so by focusing our efforts on what kind of work we want to do for the Lord then we will become more purified more realized and more satisfied and by our efforts alone this is not possible uh, at all it's only by the mercy of God Bhagavan and his uh, divine leelas which we can meditate on um, that we will find ourselves uh, advancing in, in Krishna consciousness as we've said before, advancement means, in a way, dancing for the Lord. It means that we let him 
control us. Instead of us trying to control the material energy in this Ishvara Bhava, having this Ishvara Bhava is not particularly healthy. It's better to cultivate Manjuri Bhava, Manjuri Bhava Sadhana, and then we can become like Narada Muni and travel. We'll become like Brahmara, uh, honeybees, or bumblebees, bumble waps, uh, traveling hither and thither, tasting the nectar from different flowers. But it's always good to give up a certain flower which, is, which you are feeling is inferior for a superior flower. And therefore, please... Uh, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, please Krishna, Ete Cham Shakala Pum Cham Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam, that Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan, he's the original, Ishvara Savakarana Karanam, that this form of Ishvara is the cause of all causes and the source of all sources. And one of the best ways in which to make this contact with Purnatama Bhagavan is to read the Bhagavad Gita because this is Sakshat Krishna this book is um, actually God himself by keeping the Bhagavad Gita in your home you will get benefit even if you don't read it but that doesn't mean you shouldn't read it you should read it and um, it will illuminate and elucidate your mind, make you shanti and um, blissful, which is what everyone wants. Everyone wants to be blissful. And there's no coming down in Krishna consciousness. You just it just gets better and better and better. You just get every day. You do a little or a lot, and you will make rapid. ways to please Krishna and when Krishna is pleased with us we will be pleased when we try to please ourselves it will naturally lend, end in uh, failure because we must always remember that, that God is personal as well as impersonal is a person possessing the beauty of blooming youth and if we worship the zenith not creation but uh, destination of of Godhead Krishna Loka then we can actually go there and we realize that it's a long slow process that takes much time but time itself is God so lost being lost in time lost in eternity lost in space is uh, it's our prerogative and our misfortune if we If we decide on our place of bhajan, if we decide where we want to be, then we can do bhajan there, whether there are other devotees there or not, whether whether we are an advanced devotee or a kanishta adhikari, such as myself, then we will find peace. This is something that everyone likes, no one dislikes peace. But sometimes peace is not what we require. Sometimes what we require is um, a million billion varieties of things and, and God delivers those things as and when it's necessary. We, 
all receive what we need. God gives us what we need, not what we want. There's a saying in English, God fitteth the back to the burden, which means he prepares you, not the body or not the burden. He doesn't change the burden for the back. He changes your back for the burden. But he he doesn't want he doesn't care about your body <laughs> that much. He doesn't care about your um, material possessions. He he cares about you, <laughs> and he wants you to um, become uh, his lover. He wants you to become his friend. He wants you to become his father, his mother, his servant, his loving servant, his um, peaceful shanti, shanti, shantihi. Om.